Pride actually started about 20 years ago now, and we started as the Tobacco Free Community Coalition. Um, and our community saw that there were 38% of high school students who were using tobacco, and that just wasn't acceptable to them. So they got together and um, started to do education events and fundraising, um, and eventually hired some of our great executive directors and team. Um, so we've expanded our focus geographically and our topic areas since then. Um, so our topic areas are pictured here, um, most recently at Childhood Lead Poisoning Prevention. Um, and we always try to have a focus on our vulnerable populations. Um, we do our work through the strength of our community relationships. And I think it's really important to point out that even though all this great work goes on at the state level, to make people comfortable with that change, that has to happen on the local level. And there's been a lot of attention recently drawn to state and district level work, which is really important, but we can't lose the local. Um, also, Healthy Horsecoggin serves a very diverse community, and we're diversifying all the time. Um, one of the interesting cultural things we've learned is that in Somali culture, a lot of women, when they bring their babies home from the hospital, will have um, social gatherings, which involve use of puka. And um, there's not a lot of awareness about the risks of that. So we're using two different educational models to try to reach the Somali and other African Yemena populations in our community. One's called Neighbor to Neighbor. Um, and we educate a core group of women and then ask them to go out and educate two of their friends and neighbors. And it's based on the very social culture of um, our Somali folks. And so in 2010, we educated 27 um, advocates. They went out and educated 154 friends and neighbors, which impacted 437 family members. Um, and we also use our Healthy Homes, Healthy Families model. Um, we've been teaching about um, smoke-free home pledges, the landlord disclosure law, and other tobacco issues. On the systems change front, we've been working with Central Maine Healthcare um, to embed an automatic referral to the Maine Tobacco Helpline into our electronic medical record. So this data shows in 2014, there were only 81 referrals to the Maine Tobacco Helpline from the whole hospital system. That's three hospitals. Um, and then the next year, there were 1,938 as a result of that, uh, embedding that, that prompt. Um, in addition to that, CTI did some great education with over 200 clinical staff in the system um, to talk about how to have that brief intervention with folks and really complement the systems change work that we did. So we're very proud of that. Um, like Tina mentioned, we're really proud that in Auburn we had the first um, housing authority policy and it was the fifth in the nation. Um, it, at the time it included grandfathering, but since then we've removed the grandfathering and we continue to do ways of education with the folks at the housing authority and we have some great stories we can tell you during the break about that. Um, in terms of programming, we've done our quit and win program for 17 years running now. Um, and that's an opportunity to um, piggyback on people's New Year's resolutions, have them sign up with a buddy, we provide evidence-based practices for quitting, um, and then we have a party at the end. <laughs> in Tar Wars is a tobacco-free education presentation for all fourth and fifth grade students. It is a program from the American Academy of Family Physicians. It's been shown to be effective in increasing students' knowledge of and attitudes towards tobacco use, and can be considered one of the building blocks in the school's comprehensive tobacco prevention plan. HA has recently received a, a grant from CVS, and we were able to expand and sustain Tar Wars. With help of Vicki Wigman, the program was offered to all fourth and fifth graders in Anders Garland County. Pictured here is a handout we created to go home with all students after the presentation. In addition, students went home with the Breathe Easy Coalition Smoke Free Pledge stamp included. HA has worked hard um, with area municipalities on smoke and tobacco-free policies. From Parity Park, located in the heart of Lewiston, to rural Turner Town Beach, all ending with the same goal of providing places that protect our children, families, and older adults from secondhand smoke exposure, even outside. In 2015, Central Maine Healthcare updated and enhanced their tobacco policy. It included all electronic nicotine delivery systems, no smoking in parking lots, Employees cannot have a recognizable odor of tobacco smoke while on duty, so third hand smoke. And lastly, should a patient choose to go outside to smoke, it is considered AMA, against medical advice. Anders Garland County has seen a total of almost 1,700 pledges taken, about 33% of the total taken since the program began in 2008. Lewiston and then Auburn are the two municipalities with the highest number of pledges taken. 
One reason is due to our valued community partner, Head Start. A training was developed, created, and facilitated by Healthy Androscoggin and the Brevity Coalition for our Lewis and Auburn lead poisoning staff. Staff were trained on the background information of smoke-free housing, policy adoption, and resources available. Staff can now provide education and information to area landlords that participate in the lead poisoning program. Pictured here are Andrews Coggin based work sites that have either enhanced, updated, or adopted a smoke or tobacco free policy. One work site has as little as 23 employees, while another has over 3,600. With the expertise from Joy and Joy, Project Integrate, and the Breathe Easy Coalition, included in this list are three behavioral health agencies. In 2015, with the partnership between the Dempsey Center and HA after receiving the impact grant, from, impact grant from the Maine Cancer Foundation, we were able to take our local tobacco prevention and treatment efforts to the next level. Through this grant, we are able to maximize our, tobacco, our, our impact on tobacco use and cancer rates through education, treatment, and policy initiatives. As folks in the room all know, smoking is a leading cause of preventable death. We need to keep this on people's radar. We need, to keep it, we need to continue to keep it on the front burner with legislators, doctors, parents, children, etc. Especially with the new emerging tobacco products. This is Brandon from the Dirty Loop Vape Crew. All of this great work could not have happened without our partners locally and statewide. We continue, we hope to continue to focus on the power of collaborative partnerships. Thank you all very much.